Thank you everyone for joining us for this month's Franchise Investment Show. I'm Laura Michaels. I'm the editor of Franchise Times, and I'm so glad to have with me today Ursa Jackson, who is chair of the International Franchise Association's Diversity Institute Board. And um, she is also a attorney at Clark Hill and has been um, a longtime voice in franchising and has been very involved in the franchise space. So we are excited, Ursa, to have you with us today. Thank you, Laura. And so I wanted to start by just, um, you know, for the benefit of our audience, to have you share a little bit more about your background and then how you got involved in the Diversity Institute. Thank you so much, Laura. Uh, my background and my love for franchising really started about 25 years ago when I got interested in franchise law at my law firm. Uh, when I came on full time, the law firm was a member of the International Franchise Association. Mm -hmm. And my mentor at that time said, you must attend and get familiar with IFA. That was probably one of the best decisions that I made. Um, at the time that I started coming to the IFA, I, there was the Minorities in Franchising Committee. There was no Diversity Institute. Uh, it was a group that kind of loosely met together. We had similar interests and goals with diversifying franchising. So that's how that was my initial kind of foray into franchising and the International Franchise Association. Um, I believe that franchising is such a great model and I wanted it to be a more diverse uh, group of folks uh, participating. So that's really the driver that got me involved with the work of the Diversity Institute. Fabulous. And so, um, you know, of course, organizations, you know, across franchising, the IFA um, itself too has been very focused on, you know, broadening um, the pool of potential franchisees that are out there for for different franchises. And so can you tell us just a little bit, you know, about what the Institute has been working on this year? Um, any stats you can share regarding just the performance of different franchise ownership groups? Yes. Um, so uh, the Diversity Institute started looking at uh, representation and franchising um, a number of years ago, as we looked at the study from um, the PricewaterhouseCoopers study in 20, that was released in 2018. One of the things that we were pleased to see is that the number of women in franchising was increasing. The number of minorities in franchising were the numbers were going up. What we knew was that there was still a delta between representation in the population and rep representation in franchising. We saw that as an opportunity, an opportunity for those diverse individuals to get into franchising, also an opportunity for our member companies to expand their base. And so it was a win-win. And so we really set out to uh, really strategically try and diversify franchising. Um, some of the things that the Diversity Institute has done is to set up councils. Um, and those councils are, are affinity groups, if you will. Uh, but before I talk about the affinity groups, I would like to just throw out some stats. Um, so we've got some great statistics on the performance of franchise businesses versus non-franchise businesses. Just looking at the Oxford Economic Study that the IFA commissioned, last year is a great starting point. Um, franchise businesses, and especially Black-owned franchise businesses, uh, they outperform their uh, counterparts who are non in non-franchise businesses uh, two to one. <laughs> that is um, a staggering statistic that's out there. That goes to the success of the franchise model. So that's one of those stats that we are definitely proud of. Uh, we know that franchise businesses create 2.3 times as many jobs as non-franchise businesses. Everybody's looking to diversify their uh, base of clients, customers, employees. Uh, we know that this creates a win-win, mm -hmm. uh, but we were strategic in uh, creating some councils. I'd love to take a minute just to talk about the councils that we have. Yep, definitely. Uh, the first council that we launched was actually the Pride Council. Uh, that council is headed up by Mark Jamison uh, with Propel Brands um, and also Paul Pickett with uh, Wild Birds International. They're doing a fabulous job. Uh, we are doing some programming this month. We just uh, did a panel discussion um, for uh, Pride Month, and that was very well received. Uh, we know that there's great opportunity there. Last year, we launched the Black Franchise Leadership Council. 
since uh, the launch in February of 2021, uh, we've done some amazing work uh, with the council. So we've uh, put together panels of successful franchisees, franchisors. Uh, we have also gone out to take the message of education and franchising to other groups. We've partnered with national organizations mm -hmm. like the U.S. Black Chamber. Uh, our goal is to take the message of franchising externally. We've also done training um, and programs that are designed to assist our member companies with diversifying their base of franchisees, diversifying the base of employees, suppliers. Um, during the convention earlier this year, we uh, held a DEI summit, the first of its kind. Um, it was very well received. We put together a panel of franchisors and they were able to share uh, success stories about how they've been able to venture out, um, expand their base. Uh, so it's best practices sharing. That's something that I think the IFA is uniquely uh, qualified to do to pull together uh, folks from all over the world, not just the U.S. Yep, that is some impressive work that's been done um, just in a few short years. And, you know, when I do um, a lot of my reporting, I'm talking to um, franchisees, you know, across different brands who come from different backgrounds. And, you know, one of the things that comes up in conversation a lot of times with black business owners or just other minority business owners is that, you know, they they either initially didn't even think that franchising was an approachable or achievable business model for them, or they encounter, you know, problems with access to capital. And so I'm curious, you know, just in the the circumstances that you've seen, um, your involvement over the years um, with the Diversity Institute, are there some barriers, some common barriers that you see and, you know, maybe some ways for, you know, prospective franchisees who, who are in these groups um, that they can, you know, just tap into the resources of, of franchising a little bit more? Uh, yes. So, Laura, great question. I always tell people when I look at the barriers to franchising, some of it is an information, kind of an educational gap. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, are just not thinking that franchising is achievable. They don't understand how franchising works. But there's also the real barrier of access to capital. Each time, Laura, that we put together programming, like at convention, when we put together the summit, we made sure that we led with a panel on access to capital, not just uh, kind of top level. We took a deep dive in various ways that uh, diverse candidates could seek uh, financing. Um, the educational piece is critical. Just like what you mentioned, Laura, we've heard on our uh, stops for the Open for Opportunities roadshows, mm -hmm. the exact same thing. We've had people come in and they've just been amazed that franchising is really within their reach. Uh, those are the types of things that the Diversity Institute is designed to do, to take franchising externally. I think we do that really well. We participated in a number of the IFA's Open for Opportunity Road shows and we'll continue to make DEI a portion of that. Um, and Laura, I would be remiss if I did not mention our most recent council. <laughs> May I take okay. a few minutes to talk about our Hispanic Latino um, Franchise Leadership Council. Um, I earlier talked about the data and the growth uh, within the minority groups population-wise and opportunities in franchising. Obviously, the Hispanic Latino market is poised for growth. Um, and so with that in mind, that, that's our most recent affinity group that we've launched. Erica Garza with Obon Pan is going to be leading that group. We're putting together some activities and events around that council as well. So stay tuned for that, but that's another opportunity. All of these are just designed, these are ways that we can diversify franchising, whether it's through the affinity groups, going out to the open for opportunity shows or having one-on-one -on -one conversations. We've assembled panels of successful franchisees um, and that's beneficial because it's great when you can hear from someone who looks like you that right. hey, this is achievable. So we are always mindful when we're putting these panels together. We are about to launch another three-part series, and this is how folks can get involved if they want to get more information. We're still going to cover the access to capital. We have a segment that's going to be designed for franchisors to talk about, hey, what do we look for in a successful franchisee candidate? 
We are also going to have a segment where we bring in successful franchisees to talk about their experiences, how they got from point A to point B. It's so much more impactful when you're listening to someone from your peer group. So we're mindful of that when we're putting programming together. Uh, some of the things, Laura, that we do as well is we look at whether there are opportunities to partner with national organizations, national groups that have a diverse base already. And in fact, that's uh, that's where I tell a lot of our member companies if they are looking at, hey, where do I find some of these candidates? Hey, here's a ready source for you. And we convene some of those groups as well, uh, Laura. But it's it's a great opportunity to be in franchising and especially with the interest that we've seen in DEI. It's a great time for everyone to just lean in. Wonderful. And yes, I, thank you for, for mentioning the, the new council. Um, that is great for our audience to learn about. And, you know, on the topic of, you know, franchisors who are looking to diversify uh, their candidate pools and just get their um, franchise opportunity in front of different types of potential candidates, you mentioned, you know, that there are some, some resources, but do you have any, you know, just kind of advice or, you know, is it more along the lines of finding partners in these groups who can help carry that message? I think sort of all of the above. Uh, so when I talk to uh, franchisors, I want to find mm -hmm. out sort of where they want to lean in because everyone has sort of a different story or a different bent. Uh, if I may take a little bit of time to talk about the um, the uh, HBCU partnership challenge, uh, historically black colleges and universities. So I just had a conversation with a franchisor who is looking at trying to develop some programming. They want to create a pipeline of candidates. So they want to start early. Let's tap mm -hmm. into this market. That's going to present an opportunity to diversify the franchise base, but also the employee base. So that would be a great opportunity for someone who wants to adopt the HBCU partnership challenge. Uh, sometimes it's just looking at a diverse group of franchisee candidates. And in those situations, we can point them to other organizations where they might have uh, good prospects, ready prospects. Um, so we really try and kind of tailor what we're doing based on what the company is looking for. We always mm -hmm. present opportunities for more learning uh, at convention. As I said, we did the summit and we're already looking at programming for next year's convention. So that's another way for uh, franchisors to figure out kind of best practices. Um, Laura, one thing that we did about a year and a half ago that I think was really impactful, and we will kick back up some of those discussions, and that's where we held closed discussion groups where franchisors could come together and talk about, hey, here are opportunities, here are challenges, really in those closed door uh, sessions. And we found those to be most impactful because I will tell mm -hmm. you, many companies are intimidated, they don't know where to start. This is like sort of how do you eat the elephant? Well, one bite at a time. And so trying to figure out where to start that process can be daunting. Um, and so uh, hearing about what your uh, colleagues are doing can be helpful also. So the best practice is sharing that the IFA has been great at in other areas. There's no reason that DEI can't be one of those as well. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I wish we had um, all the time in the world to to talk more about this topic because I do think it is so important, and I think our audience, you know, both on the franchisor and franchisee side, are you know attunely, um, acutely interested um, in this topic. And so I would, of course, invite our audience to check out um, our coverage that we have on FranchiseTimes.com of the these different programs, of the diverse pool of uh, franchisees that are out there. Again, um, looking for successful stories of those uh, people that that look like you. Um, I think that's an important story to tell. And then, of course, uh, tapping into the resources of the IFA. Uh, thank you so much, Ursa, for joining us. And uh, if you have last words, I'll, I'll give you a chance for a, a final comment here. Thank you, uh, Laura, for the opportunity. Uh, the best piece of advice for companies is get started, do something. Don't let perfection stand in the way of progress. That is the, the perfect note to end this on. Um, thank you everyone for joining us and please stay tuned for our upcoming brand presentations. Thank you, Laura. Thank you.